All right, welcome back to another episode of Two Plain Sports. Just the Brandon and Jose show today. Um, it's been some time since we did a recorded video, but we're going to go back to our roots, talk about recruiting. There's a big junior day coming up, and we will have a video on that um, closer to probably next week. But today we're going to talk about some of the kids that OU's been offering, where OU may be on them, and just kind of the outlook on their game and what they could be adding to any program but hopefully oklahoma um come the time they commit before we get into it make sure to like comment subscribe let us know your thoughts on all these um very talented athletes and make sure to check out all the links in the description mainly the t-shirt link helps out a little bit support the show the really cool shirts and i think we're, we've got some more designs coming so stay tuned on that stuff um all right let's get started so we're just going to start with the big fish of the defensive recruiting for, for this cycle. Five-star safety, Jonah Williams out of Galveston, Texas. Dude is just a freak athlete overall. Um, I, I'm not going to go quite to his his junior season didn't quite look to the level of like a Peyton Bowen. But dude is just as much of a game changer uh, as Peyton Bowen. It was right, right there. Yeah, no, it was right there with Peyton Bowen. I think he's probably one of the two best, or one of the two uh, most exciting prospects that we're going to talk about tonight on this on this show. But I mean, yeah, you looked at his his his, his measurables at six four two oh three, and then what he did on the stat sheet, jump off the page. You know, fifty four tackles, eight pass breakups. Uh, he had four receptions, three of which he returned for touchdowns. He had one fumble return touchdown, two punt return uh, touchdowns, and two two kick return touchdowns. So it just Put the ball in his hands. He's going to make plays. Uh, I think, you know, Peyton Bowen did the same thing uh, at, the, at the high school level. Uh, he's got everything you really that you're looking for. To, uh, when you're looking at a safety, it's not very far from Oklahoma playing Gavelson. Uh, maybe we'll have some proximity uh, helping helping us here. He's got the Alabama stamp. Uh, there, there's really not a lot to not love about this kid. And wherever this kid wants to go is where he'll basically end up. The good thing for Oklahoma is they are one of the schools that has been recruiting him heavily. He's been to campus a couple times now, um, so he's familiar with it. And I believe he will be there for the junior day event at the end of the month. Got to like where Oklahoma's at. I mean, this one is just like any other five star. This is far from over. You're going to be we're going to be talking about this kid probably for the five for the next five, six, seven months. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna get annoying, man. Kind of like the Peyton Bowen, situ Peyton yeah. Bowen situation did. Although, yeah, that one worked out for us. Hopefully, this one works out too. But yeah, he's gonna have his fair share. And adding him suitors. to the defense, adding him to the defense would be very nice because you look at the safety room and it's already very it has a lot of good talent. But he's in 2025. That would potentially be Peyton's last year um, on campus. If you put him, mix in a little Jonah. They're very different statures. I mean, Peyton's a pretty small, small guy. Just can make plays. He's a playmaker. And we saw it in his freshman year at Oklahoma. We saw it when he was like didn't guyer. Jonah Williams is a much bigger guy where it makes that no fly zone that we've been talking about in Norman a lot more prevalent, especially when it comes to anything over the top. Like these guys are just freak athletes where it's not gonna be easy for quarterbacks to just throw all over the yard with with those two guys at the top no. of the defense they'd be so fun to have together it would be very similar to what we're having with uh right now with you know with with billy bowman as a starter and peyton bowen kind of waiting in the wings it would be the exact same situation here with peyton bowen would be the guy and jonah williams we kind of waiting waiting there to take over but i mean man those are two really really good guys uh, and peyton bowen and jonah williams to have waiting um so hopefully this one works out for us yep for sure and I mean, we'll, we're going to keep track of where Oklahoma stands. I think at this point, OU's got to like where they're at. They've been a hitter in his recruitment, and it is, and like you said, not too far from Oklahoma. Um, and in Texas, where Oklahoma's going to be recruiting hard for ever, basically. Um, but let's move on to some OK Preps kids. Um, first, first, we're going to go with the Oklahoma Carl Albert Sooners. Um, four-star defensive back Tristan Haynes he is the number four player in this year's Oklahoma class top 120 I believe composite on 247 6'2 175 
<laughs> Oklahoma is recruiting him as, as a defensive back, but he plays wide receiver. He returns kicks and punts for Carl Albert at the moment. Brandon, kick it over to you. Your initial thoughts on on this guy. This is the one we absolutely cannot lose. Uh, you know, with Jonah Williams, you you definitely want to land him, but you know he's gonna have being a five star that he is, and being from Texas, you know, South Texas, he's it's it's no shooting. But you know, this kid, as you just mentioned, the Carl Albert Sooners, he's right down your he's right in the, he's right in your backyard, and he's a freak. Uh, you know, six two one seventy five runs track, plays receiver, plays defense. He's also a return specialist. He's he's showed that he can also return punts and kicks for touchdowns. Uh, this this kid brings a lot to the table. Has a great size as uh, at defensive back. You know that corner spot is one of the spots that there's been some shaky play at times. So I think he would be a guy that can kind of come in right away. You know that 2025 class and start pushing for time right away. Um, this of all the kids we're going to talk about, I think this is the one you you can't lose on. You you've got a full court press. Do whatever you got to do. You got to make sure Tristan Haynes ends up being Oklahoma Sooner. And you know, luckily for us, is it is the Carl Albert Sooners, and we've got. Kevin Sperry, and we've got Xavier uh, Robinson there, I'm sure, trying to push him in the right direction. So I hope with this one, this one goes our way. Yeah, Oklahoma's done very good at recruiting that school. And obviously, Kevin Sperry, after committing to Oklahoma, ended up transferring there um, to play his last two years of high school football. He is a, I would say, a musket. Um, and for the reasons you said exactly, because you do have so much going your way in that just with that school specifically, you would think Oklahoma is able to use those peer connections, um, have the coaches. I mean, it's Jay Valai recruiting him. He's one of the best recruiters on this staff, if not the best recruiter on this staff. You would you'd think that he is putting Oklahoma in the best position to not let him leave the state. Now, at the end of the day, the, you know, sometimes kids want to leave the state. So it wouldn't be an unheard of situation. Maybe that's a, something he wants to do. But again, like trying to get this guy to stay in Oklahoma be part of be part of the team basically just move Carl Albert that 2025 graduating class bring all those guys to Norman not that far be a good time for them and his gameplay watching him I wouldn't say he's the fastest player he's definitely not going to be someone that if he ends up playing receiver or is a kick returner he the biggest thing about his game is he will make people miss he is hard to bring down even at him being such a slender guy at 175 people don't bring him down easily at the high school level now if he can put maybe a little bit more um, strength on himself going into college i don't think that changes much keep that um low center of gravity dude it, it was impressive to watch you would see him just break four or five tackles before anyone got even close but at that point he had so much separation that it, it was guys that were coming from like 15 20 yards back that were just in a dead sprint trying to catch him and they weren't able to he got in the got in the end zone and as a defensive back he plays that ball aggressively in the air which is fun to watch because you don't really want to see guys obviously like in an ideal world it's just hard for the quarterback to get any completions on on the corner if any and you don't really ever think about him but if you're going to throw his way he's going to make it hard for that wide receiver to catch the ball he's going to put a body on him which is important i believe that he is a like, like many of the kids we're going to talk about a multi-sport athlete so yeah you know, i think every single thing. one is yeah yeah it's, it's pretty cool it, it, there's a trend there but yeah no i think what you just described i mean he, he fits what you want going into the sec he's got great size for it too i think he's he's, he's a perfect sec corner he, he's a musket he's i think he's the only musket that we have that we're going to talk about tonight Yep. And let again, let us know your thoughts. Maybe you don't think he's a musket, but definitely an important piece to, to the puzzle in the 2025 class who already has nine commits. And we'll talk more about them as the year goes on. Um, and we'll probably do a full class breakdown later on in the year as well. But moving on to the next guy, also from Oklahoma, um, top 100 player, four star edge CJ Nixon out of Weatherford, Oklahoma, um, home of current Sooner. Ethan Downs. Um, this guy is also a freak athletically. He is a he plays football and basketball for Weatherford. Um, currently holds offers. Um, I know for sure to three schools for basketball, a lot more for football. Again, top 100 player in his class, 6'5, 220. Um, I think the biggest thing with him when you look at him is just if you're going to be 
try to be critiquing him as in his build mainly pretty light especially for a football player at the collegiate level and that's probably due to the fact that he plays basketball in high school um not sure if he's going to want to play both uh football and basketball at the collegiate level if he is that's going to be something that will be need to be monitored probably pretty heavily by his coaches but you'd like to see a guy playing edge probably good and closer to 240 250 um as long as they can keep their speed yeah uh so he holds offers to oral roberts tulsa and ut arlington those are the three college basketball programs that have uh, extended him an invitation to play for them but um he, he reminds me of a more raw version of what Danny Okoye is. You know, Danny Okoye, the, the, the only knock on him really is the homeschool thing and the level of competition. But his numbers are, I mean, they're stupid. Like, he's he lived in the backfield. Uh, with CJ Nixon, you mentioned the size at 220, 225, whatever. Uh, it, it it shows a little bit, I guess, in that tape because uh, he's being recruited as an edge player. And he only he had five tackles for loss and one sack last year, and I think four sacks the year before. So, you know, he's not – uh, necessarily blowing up the quarterbacks like like you're thinking of uh, when you think of Danny Okoye or some of the other guys that we have recruited in the past. But that's not to say he can't get there. He's <clears throat> he's I mean he's a freaky athlete he, to hold three three college basketball offers. He also puts up five six hundred yards uh, as a wide receiver for Weatherford. So he's I think the the way he's being used right now in high school uh, playing basketball like you mentioned and playing receiver. It's kind of holding him back from getting to that uh, ideal weight and size for a college defensive end, but. You know, if he does decide to come to Oklahoma or if he does decide to play edge somewhere in college football, no matter where that is, he's probably going to be a guy who's going to have to take a redshirt year or so, you know, and just kind of bulk up and get there. But he can do it. And watching him, and again, this may be a level of competition thing. Maybe he's just so big and athletic that he makes it look super easy. But even though his stats don't pop off the page, he did a good job of making sure he was always prevalent in the plays that the defense were making he was he has a high motor he's a dude that that can be really good it is but i think that at the end of the day that it the fact that he plays basketball and he's got to say somewhat slender during the football season so it's not a big and it's probably just how his body works right i mean it's not like these kids are have nutritionalists on their side for the most part his body probably just doesn't gain as much weight since he's going to have to run a lot more once it gets to come to basketball season. You know, given what Schmidt can do, you would expect that, or, or any collegiate, any good collegiate um, with strength and, and conditioning coordinator can do, pack on 20, 25 pounds during a freshman year, let him eat all the pancakes he wants. <laughs> And then have him ready to be a, a bigger factor once it comes to his red shirt freshman year. Um, but yeah, again, a dude, and he is the number one player in Oklahoma right now. So I can almost guarantee that this staff is doing everything they can to make sure he stays in the state. Keep him home, yeah. I, I imagine he won't try to play uh, hoops for the Sooners as well. We we have seen that attempted before. Uh, it didn't work out. I imagine he if if if, if he commits, he'll stick to football. Well, and it's tough to play both at the collegiate level. It's a lot of time. Um, the bot, Your body just doesn't – it can't be the same for football as it is for basketball. If you weigh 250 on the football field, you're going to be too slow to do much for basketball, and it just doesn't really – it's really difficult. Not that it's impossible, but it'd be interesting to watch someone try to be really Has anybody ever done sports. it, really, at, at the college level? I know you There's know. A, We've seen it in, in, with baseball, both in college and pros, but I feel like with basketball, it's not really a thing. I've, I don't think I've ever seen it. I can't remember the guy's name, but there was a kid at Baylor that was a decent basketball player and did a little bit of contributing on the football team. I don't think he was like a major starter, but there was someone that has done it to a level, not someone that's like, like a Kyler Murray, right, that is going to get drafted in two sports. I don't think that's ever been done for basketball and football. Because, again, that it's pretty is, hard. That is going to be the end of video challenge. All right. Now we got a little glimpse into what we're going to do at the end <laughs> yeah. of the video. Um, but let's move on. CJ Nixon going to be interesting to watch. Again, one that Oklahoma, I think, is fair to say is going to be pushing for hard, given that he's an number one player in the state of Oklahoma and has, you know, Ethan Downs probably trying to keep those weather yeah. for kids from going to Oklahoma State at the end of the day. Let's move on to last couple guys here. Um, 
going to move on to the linebacker position, one that Oklahoma didn't recruit too heavily in the 2023 class, but seems to have more focus in the 2024 class. Um, first of all, it's going to be the first offer that Zach Alley has, has made since taking the co-defensive coordinator position, linebacker coach. Jaden Harmon, um, due to four-star, last year t- totaled 80 tackles, eight tackles for loss, five sacks, one pick, two or three pass breakups. Brandon, I'm going to kick it over to you. I'm going to let you go with your initial thoughts here. But guy, yeah, guy's uh, a monster when you look at the stat sheet. Yeah, really, really good. I think it's a very good first offer for Zach Alley. Um, I'm watching this tape right now here. He's got, there's, I think, the, one of the first or second clips you see of him is him making a play at the goal line to save a touchdown. He's a guy who's also played safety uh, for them. He has very similar size to um, Jonah Williams. Uh, he's he's a little shorter, but he weighs a little bit more. Um but, you know, I think he's a guy that could contribute at linebacker and or safety, you know, kind of wherever he's needed. He might be a perfect uh, guy for that cheetah spot. Very athletic, very versatile. Uh, I think it's a great first offer for Zach Alley. It'll be it'll be one that's fun to follow. And hope you can get him out of Georgia, man, and, and get him to come to the Sooner State. Yeah, right now he's listed at 6'1", 215. So right around that size, like you mentioned, slightly shorter. Um think the next guy we'll, we'll talk about, I would say, is a little bit more cheetah. But when it comes to Jaden Harmon, he just has really good instincts. I mean, you're you're watching it, you know, on his tape. It seemed, dude, it, that guy lives in the backfield, just religiously. I don't think there's there's a play on his tape where you're, where if the opportunity was there, he wasn't in the backfield. Like the guy was back there for run plays, rushing the passer. He has really good bend. When I watched it. It might obviously it's a bit of a stretch because he is a, just a junior in high school, but he has a Micah Parsons like game. He's undersized for the position that you ask him to play. Probably not going to look like he should be there, but boy, can he do it? He's violent when it comes to to hitting those tackles and trying to and get the edge to get to the passer. He hits on on any screenplay. He's going to hit those guys hard. It's he was fun to watch. Um, and like you said, great first offer. It'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma would use him because you looking at his size, you'd think, yeah, maybe he is a cheetah because he isn't a you know a true linebacker like a Danny Stutzman or um, is or Lewis Carter, Kip Lewis, Jaron Kanick. He's a little bit more. He's a guy you want to send after the quarterback and get in the backfield. But he's not a bad pass uh, defender no, against the pass either. He's so comfortable back here at safety. I mean, half his highlights from playing safety, and I, that's why I think he's, I think he'd be he'd be great in that cheetah spot. He's he's mm-hmm. very versatile. Like, uh, he's so comfortable both rushing the passer as you're talking about, but also him dropping back here. He doesn't he doesn't look very un- uncomfortable at all. He's he's right where he needs to be. He's making plays on the ball. He's he's very athletic, man. Yeah, yeah. To me, again, like I said, he he's Micah Parsons esque. Um, was what I wrote on my notes, just with how he, how violently he is rushing the passer and getting in the backfield, and like you said, getting back and trying to defend against the pass. Good of both. Hopefully, Oklahoma can secure him. Like you said, he is from Georgia, so going into to dog territory will not be easy to get him out, but not impossible. You know, schools do it more often than probably Kirby Smart would like. So hopefully, Oklahoma <laughs> can win that one. Um, last guy we're talking about in this video is Christian Jones, four-star linebacker, uh, top 200 player, I believe, right around that area. Last year tallied 69 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, fast, five pass breakups, and a pick six. You know, I think this guy is, this is the guy that I see being more of a cheetah uh, guy. He is, he reminds me of like Desan McCullough and what he is now. He's really more outside linebacker, cheetah guy. Good at rushing the passer, really good at um, defending against the run, especially when they try to stretch out the, the the running back either on stretch stretch plays or when they just try to swing him out for uh, for dump offs if the quarterback can't get to his first or second read. Um, this dude could be good. Um, one that definitely might need to be t- you know chiseled a little bit to, to get to where you want him to be, but he's got the talent and he's athletic enough where. That athleticism is helping him make up for whatever he still needs to learn in in a playbook or on the football field. 
Yeah, I know for sure. I think his uh, he's he's he's, he's a, another fantastic athlete. But everybody we've talked about so far has been. Um, we mentioned it just last with with Jaden Harmon with him being from Georgia. It'd be tough to go pull him out of Georgia. Uh, I think it's even gonna be harder for this kid. He's him being he's he's from the the Lincoln area. Uh, it seems what Matt Rule is doing up there in, in in Nebraska is is something that he's or that you know a lot of kids seem to be buying into. I think he's crystal balled right now to Nebraska. Yeah, he's from Omaha. Uh, th- this one. I, you know, I'd love to have him, but it, it, I think it's going to be real tricky to pull him out of uh, Nebraska here. But yeah, great player. You're still muted. There we go. To correct myself <laughs> real quick, he's a top 150 player. Um, so definitely uh, selling him short there. But yeah, it'll be interesting again how... Because he was being recruited by Ted Roof, obviously mm-hmm. no longer at Oklahoma. We'll see how that works. Another guy that we won't go too into, um, but Christian Thatcher, a guy that we um, kind of touched base on when he was at Oklahoma during last football season. You know, he said he was super psyched, love Oklahoma. Seems like um, it, it definitely a little bit of a, could be a different story with Ted Roof no longer being there. I know people gave a lot of flack to Ted Roof, but he was a hell of a recruiter. And when he needed linebackers and he was given that um, you know, order or opportunity to go get the, the best linebackers in the country, he did what he could to be in those races. And at the end of the day, in the 2023 class, he pulled, or sorry, 2020, no, it was a 2023 class. Yeah, Omasigo, Lewis Carter, mm-hmm. um, Phil Pichotti, he pulled he pulled the guys at Oklahoma. I can promise he was going to rely on in the next year or two at that position. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see whenever you know whenever Coach Roof finally does get somewhere, you know, finds a, a a new home to see if these kids will start to start turning their direction too. Uh, kind of mm-hmm. like Jones and Thatcher, you know, were with 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 Teddy Roof. Yeah, and the, the, to go back to what you were saying on Christian. It is going to be hard to go into Nebraska out of Omaha. Not, uh, it's an area that Rule is trying to get back to what it once was. And these kids are not leaving the state of Nebraska. No, it's, um, it's tricky. It's not going to be easy to get in, go in there. We, we saw with Grant Briggs, he's not even from Nebraska. You know, he's an Iowa kid, but it, it was close enough to Nebraska. It's, it's, it's going to be tough to win out some of these uh, actual kids who live in Nebraska for mm-hmm. for their services for sure um that's all the guys we're going to go over for here on the defense we'll talk more about the <clears throat> about more guys as the year goes on there's a lot of time in this 2025 recruiting cycle you don't want to miss it uh, brandon i'm gonna kick it over to you before we do our close out here yeah that's i mean that's that's all i got i'm ready for the uh <coughs> for the end of video if you are go ahead yeah, so the end of the video, we're going to do it, man. Uh, has anybody you, – you mentioned a, a student athlete at Baylor. I can't think of who it is. But, um, yeah, if you guys know who the athlete is, who, who or any athlete for that matter, who dabbled uh, in both college – or has to be at least college level because I don't think anybody's in, in, in the pros. Actually, there's definitely no pros who have, who have this, but college player who played both football and basketball. doesn't have to be at a high level, but at a, at a, uh, at, a at least a decent level in both sports. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would love to see if anyone knows that because that is that'd be interesting to see someone try to do it. Um, but let's make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do the end of video challenge. Check out all the links in the description, especially the T-shirt one. We would love for you guys to support us. We appreciate all you for watching. We will see you next time.